the God-given gift. In late March 1939, the NKVD secret police officers tried to execute Father Alexei on a crude homemade electric chair. As Alexei later related, that was on my name day. My cellmates, Father Gevrasi and Father Gesaki, gave me their blessings, saying, We bless you to go through yet another ordeal, dear Father Herodicon. Please forgive us. And I replied, I must beg forgiveness from you. After all, it was I who killed. Perhaps I stood up not for the sake of Christ. Perhaps I should not have done that. But I felt sorry for Father Tihon. Perhaps I was wrong. And they said, no, you were right, Father Deacon. Father Tihon was a holy man for us, and God will forgive your sin for his sake. That is how they encouraged and supported me. They led me into a cell and made me sit in a rigid armchair. They connected up wires to my eyes and turned on the current. There was a clap, a blinding flash, and my eyes were gone. I felt as if something heavy hit me on the head. And together with the armchair, I collapsed and rolled down into the basement, where I lay on the floor for a week, and nobody even bothered to come to check if I was dead or alive. I had a splitting headache, but I did not die. When they led me out of the basement, the armchair remained there. Amazingly, God himself must have saved Alexander from certain death. On April 7, 1939, at the Annunciation, which that year coincided with Good Friday, they decided to execute all the inmates by firing squad. Those of inmates who were too exhausted and couldn't walk, who were sick, blind, and crippled, who were tied up and transported by sledge train to the deserted place for execution. On the way, a violent snowstorm began and faring for their lives. On April 7, 1939, at the Annunciation, which that year considered with Good Friday, they decided to execute all the inmates by firing squad. Those of the inmates who were too exhausted and could not work, who were sick, blind, and crippled, were tied up and transported by sledge train to a deserted place for execution. On the way, a violent snowstorm began, and fearing for their lives, the guards decided to abandon their condemned inmates in the middle of snowbound field and hurried back to camp. The would-be executioners were sure that the exhausted inmates, deprived of any help, were doomed to die of exposure. They were wrong. The monks survived successfully disengaged themselves from the trammels and went their separate ways. Her monk Antony later recalled, I rose to my feet with difficulty and began to walk. 
I kept on walking for a long time, and then I slipped, lost my balance, and fell into a high snow drift. I remember thinking to myself, this is it. This is my home. And this is my end. I was totally buried under the snow. And what? I was totally buried under the snow. And that was the last and only thing I remembered. The baptism. Half frozen to death, he was found as if by a miracle by local Yakut hunters who brought him to safety and nursed him back to life. Alexei was not ungrateful, of course. No, he had no money, and yet he found a way to repay the Yakut family for his rescue and survival. The small son of the master of the house fell ill, and that at one point the parents gave up on him, thinking he is him as good as dead and began to prepare for his burial. However, Father Alexei asked them not to hurry and spend the whole day and night fervently praying for the boy. Not for my sake, the sinful and unworthy monk that I am, but for the sake of this little boy and his family. Dear God, please help. Thus he pleaded with God, and to the amazement of all, the boy recovered. Struck by this miracle, the Akuts proceeded to destroy their idols whom they worshipped and began to call Alexei their god. Embarrassed, Alexei replied, I am no god. I am the last and most sinful servant of God. That's what I am. Whether the Yakuts understood what he was saying, we do not way of knowing. After all, they could hardly speak Russian. One thing is certain, however, and that is that they decided to undergo conversion to orthodoxy in the body. The master of the house and his immediate family were the first to become Christians. Later, their relatives and neighbors followed suit. The newly baptized Yakuts then invited Father Alexei to stay on in their settlement, but he chose to press on. What was it that lured Alexander on? He was blind, and yet he would not stay put. How did he manage to find his way? True, good people made two wooden staffs for him. The dark and thick... What was it that lured Alexander on? He was blind, and yet he would not stay put. How did he manage to find his way? True. Good people made two wooden staffs for him. The dark and thicker one served as a support for him on the road. He would lean on it as a youth leans on his father's shoulder. The lighter staff helped him walk around obstacles, like a mother protecting her child, keeping him out of harm's way, as it were. <laughs> 